Welcome to the next video in the Starfleet Historical Weapon Series. Designed to help you, Starfleet cadets, learn more about Starfleet's tactical history as well as the weapons of our allies and adversaries. As head of Starfleet Academy's Klingon History Program, I'm really excited about this one. The Klingon Batleth, the Sword of Honor. While it's very difficult to separate fact from myth when it comes to early Klingon history, this is what historians know for sure. In the 9th century on the old Terran calendar, the planet we now know as Kronos, or Kronos, the Klingon homeworld, was ruled by groups of warlords, the most powerful of which was Molar, a tyrant renowned for both his cruel practices and his swift retribution to anyone who stood against him. On the shores of the Western Ocean, lived a minor noble family which had two sons. The oldest son was named Morath, and the younger son was named Kalis. Though Morath, as the older son, stood to inherit the family's property and lands, many viewed Kalis, the younger son, as a more rightful successor due to his honesty, hard work, and filial piety. Things finally came to a head when Morath began spreading lies about Kalis' reputation in order to bolster his own. The younger brother challenged his older brother to combat. Morath, unsure of his ability to beat Kalis, fled down to the shores of the ocean, where the two engaged in a fight. The Klingon chronicles say that it lasted for twelve days and twelve nights. Finally, Kalis bested his older brother. That he was defeated, Morath took their father's sword, the symbol of their family's legitimacy and power in Klingon culture, and threw it into the ocean so that Kalis would never possess it. This was significant as it showed that the family had cast away their honor in the eyes of other Klingons. Different interpretations of the Chronicles then say that either Kalis killed his older brother in retribution or left him to die on the shores of the sea. Kalis made his way inland to the Krita Plains, dominated by Mount Kristok, the tallest volcano on Kronos. Kalis climbed the slopes of the dormant stratovolcano, and when he reached the summit, the chronicle says there was a great eruption. Molten rock and lava spewed forth and ran down the sides of the mountain, melting eons worth of snow and glaciers into a torrent of water which filled a lake below, the Lake of Lusor. Kalis then knelt down on the pool of molten rock that had formed in the crater. He then cut a lock of his own hair off, dipped it into the molten lava, and twisted it into the shape of a sword to replace the one that his brother had thrown into the sea. This new sword he named Batleth, the Sword of Honor, because Kalis swore then and there that he would use that blade to restore honor to the Klingon people who had lost it through ages of decadence and greed. After quenching the sword in the new waters of Lake Lusor, Kalis then began a two-year-long revolution. Finally, he reached the stronghold of the tyrant Molor and challenged him to single combat. Molor had never been defeated, but Kalis bested him using his new blade and then declared himself to be the first emperor of a united Klingon empire. Kalis also founded a new religion based on his principles of honor. In the centuries since his reign, those same principles remain in the Klingon empire and Kalis himself has been decreed to be unforgettable. Though the Klingon Empire has long since developed space flight, modern weapons, and other advanced technologies, Klingons still prefer to use edge weapons in combat. This goes back to those principles laid down by Kalis the Unforgettable in the Klingon faith. In fact, an off-sighted Klingon proverb goes, the Klingon who kills without showing his face 
has no honor at all. If given any choice, even in the 24th century, a Klingon will go for their sword before any other weapon. Since the Klingon Empire opened to Federation tourists about 30 years ago, you can find replica batleths in every souvenir shop in the first city. However, true Klingon batleths are still incredibly high quality and hand forged. Klingon weapons grade steel is known as Bakanite, and it is only mined from iron ore on the slopes of the Kristok volcano, where Kalis, by legend, forged the very first sword over 1400 years ago. There's probably a reason for that, because chemical tests of the iron ore found on the slopes of that volcano shows that it is very, very pure and low in impurities. Bakanite ore is hand smelted using a charcoal furnace known as a teak kales, or heart of kales. The teak kales burns for about five days in order to transform that iron ore into bakanite able to be forged into a high quality sword. Bakanite is very controlled in the Klingon Empire. Its export is actually illegal, and that is on purpose to prevent the secrets of this sword from getting out of the empire and beyond Klingon control. When the smith takes that raw bakanite, he or she forges it into two distinct groups, a low carbon steel and a high carbon steel. The smith then kind of creates an envelope where the soft bakanite goes inside the hard bakanite shell. This creates what's called composite bakanite, and it's the secret to the batleth's incredible strength. The soft inner core acts as a shock absorber, allowing the Klingon to swing the batleth with incredible force, while the hard outer jacket allows the blades to be sharpened to an incredible level. The batleth embodies the Klingon view of the universe. Everything in balance. Chaos must be tempered with control. As one side advances, the other side retreats. The batleth is as beautiful as it is deadly. Though some see it as a symbol of a more barbaric age, it is nonetheless an elegant weapon. A weapon that Klingons still view as the ultimate expression of their bravery and pride. It is also a weapon that you are likely to encounter as you go boldly out into the stars. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.